What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We're on a new season. This is really the first one of the 2021 season post baby. So I'm gonna show you kind of how everything gets organized, how we keep this thing running efficiently. So we've got deliveries coming in, we've got the footings getting installed. I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. Just me and Scooter right now. We got deliveries coming. We got uh, Goliath Tech coming to put in some footing. So, just the A team. All right, so we're back on site now. All the helical piles are installed and now we're ready to start framing. We don't have to wait for that inspection, so that's awesome. And uh, first thing that we have to do, Tony's actually starting to build the beams, but I'm gonna set all of these at the exact elevation. We give them a rough number, but the bases are adjustable, so they don't have to be dead on. We're gonna set them exactly where we want them and then we can start framing. Everything's gonna be nice and level. All right, so I'm at minus 27 right now. I wanna be at minus 26 and three quarter. That's gonna accommodate a step out of the house, our decking, our joists, and our beam. And then that's the height that we want. So we want 26 and three quarter. Twenty-six and three quarter. They're the only ones that can do this because they have a patent on it and uh, the adjustable heads is one of the biggest time savers. That's probably the thing I like most about these piles. beam set at the right height now we just need to set these post brackets so showed you this before but we've got two different types of screws bolts whatever you want to call them we've got half threaded and full threaded so it gets two of these half threaded bolts into the pile so there's holes in this pile that's going to give it the uplift resistance and then we'll put a full threaded one against the side of the pile so you can see it's just going to hit the pile right here that's going to give us that lateral strength Locked in for justice. So one of the most important things is getting everything figured out beforehand, doing as much planning as you can. That's how we're gonna stay efficient. So what I do is I set everything up, I do all the drawings, and then I put them on Google Drive so the guys can access them. So check out the drawing that I gave the guys. Now this is gonna have all of our framing layout on it. It's gonna have what lumber is gonna go where. So you can see that we're cutting uh, the flat blocking on the smaller deck out of two two by eight by twenties. And then we have all the joists. We know how many of those pieces of lumber are going to that deck and it keeps us really efficient. The guys, you know, don't have to stand around and think about it. They can just look at that drawing. They know exactly what's going where. They know the framing detail. They know the border detail. They know everything that's gonna go into it. So they can just reference that and keep moving. So the more that you can plan out beforehand, the better. All right, so we're gonna put in our flat blocking on the ends of the joist bays so that it'll accept our picture frame border. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're laying it flat, it's gotta be 162 and a half. Give me that tall, big dog. Thanks, 
big dog. These are heavy. There we go. All right, so I just screwed some scabs to this. This one's going by the house, so I can only overhang it a tiny bit. Now, really making this wood heavy nowadays. Yeah. Boom, just like that. Now it's nice and flat. I can get screws in it. Don't have to struggle with it. Nice easy little tip for you there. So now in the middle here, it dropped down a tiny bit. I can just pry up on it. Lock it in for justice. So when we frame these freestanding decks, we like to set our ledger or rim joist. It's not really a ledger because it's not getting attached. We like to set that on top of our closest beam and then we can nail off all of our joists. Once we have them all in, then we just slide the whole thing against the house. It's a lot easier to nail this way. Nail them from behind, you don't need any joist hangers or anything like that. So it's a little hard. It's good to have a couple people on hand if you're gonna use this method, but we got a couple strong guys here. Layout is always one of the most important things on a deck project, so we always like to pre-mark our rim board. That way we know exactly where everything's going to go. You can see that center mark there. That's going to be the center of our deck, and we're basing our vertical breaker board off of this. So that's where that's going to go, and uh, yeah, keep these rolling. So you're making uh, stringers there, yep. kid. So you cut one, and that's your template. And you mark template, and then you trace all the rest along with it. Makes sense. How exciting! One, two, three, four, five. That's all I need. Thirty stringers. I'm old, dusty. So we have one side of this pergola, pergola structure. It's not really a pergola. It's just an anchoring point for our shade sail. So we're building the other arch on the other side. The whole idea behind this design is that we can wrap it with standard five and a half inch deck boards and we won't have you know, any weird cuts or anything. It's gonna work out perfectly. So, so we have a double two by six that's gonna act as our post and we're gonna have the same thing for our rafter. So what we did for the post is cut one five and a quarter less than the other so that can accept our rafter that comes across and then we have a nice anchoring point on it so we've just staggered all these cuts like this that way it'll go up and you can see up there it's locked in for justice now to give it some lateral stability there's going to be railing tied into it and a bar so if it's just like this it's not going to be strong enough to hold anything but with it anchored into the deck and the bar and the railings connected to it it's going to be stiff enough to accept that shade set. Here's a little trick for you. I don't want to inconvenience anybody by uh, helping me over here. So 
Got a little block. I've already marked this out where it's going to meet the deck. See, here's my line. And there we go. Little second set of hands. That's just to temporarily hold it in place. We're gonna get some bolts through it, but uh, we're gonna get them set up first, get the top on there, and then we can make adjustments. Lock it in for justice from there. I'm gonna build out this bar area now, and this is another thing that we planned ahead of time, so check out this drawing. These aren't architectural drawings. We had an architect draw the plans for this, but that's just for me to kind of visualize what's going on with the bar and figure out all the measurements and our overhangs and everything like that. So I have everything figured out. The only thing I had to verify was the distance between posts, so I have that. Now I'm just gonna build the whole thing, bring it over there, and should go up in no time. This is an area where if you're doing it on site, you're sitting there thinking for, you know, a half hour, like, okay, overhang's gonna be here. How's the decking gonna look around it? A lot of that stuff was taken into account as well. This should go up pretty quick, and it's all because of that planning. Last couple pieces going on here. You can see we've got this bar. It's getting locked in for justice. We got some structural screws attaching it to these pergola posts. We've also got structural screws underneath into here. Don't want to have any rock on this, you know, when people are leaning just, on it. Just roll. No rock, just roll, baby. Last two pieces. And we did a double on the back and the sides because we're gonna have a five and a half inch piece of decking as a border. We want it to run straight into this. So we have three inches plus an inch for the decking trim and then we'll have about an inch and a half overhang. And uh, yeah, it's gonna look nice and clean. Oh, you wanna whack that with the nailer? Plus? Yeah. I mean, I'm not that heavy because I'm in excellent shape and uh, pretty much an ideal weight for my body type. But uh, even if I was heavier, this thing I'm pretty confident would hold me. I'd say this bar is pretty much locked in for justice. It's like a commercial. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yep, it's good though. My job. Yep. Dude, what do you do at work? I don't know. I really don't know. So we got the framing all wrapped up. Let me show you the last couple things that we did to get this thing all tightened up. Finished up our stair stringers here, and you can see we've got quite a bit of elevation change here. That's always gonna be a bit of an issue when you have a huge wraparound step like this. Odds are your elevations aren't gonna be the same at all points around there. So we do have a walkway that's coming off of here. So we'll just raise the grade of that to meet so our riser heights are all the same, and then there'll be a tiny little step off of that walkway into the yard, but we're gonna take care of that in one of the future videos. Last couple things that we do, install this flashing tape. That's gonna keep any water from sitting on these flat pieces of blocking. That's gonna accept our borders and stuff like that. So we have them on all corners of the steps. We have them on the edges of each deck. It's looking pretty good, ain't it, Pat? Okay. Well, that's it for this vlog. You can see we're starting to lay some of this decking, so you're gonna have to tune into the next one to see us get all this decorator's decking down. So make sure you hit subscribe, and until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.